list, and I had um, different pairings. Um, they're, they basically bought half of the second list, so it's pretty out of parents' position. And for my husband, who's been helping me with, with the classroom, getting um, the projector hung and installed, which has been a, a bear, but he's been helping me and doing a great job, so I appreciate him. Amen. And if you could pray for me, because we have, I have a crazy bunch this year. They're, they're pretty wild. So if you could pray for me for, I don't know, just pray for me. Amen. Wow. So how God blesses, you can't even speak sometimes. Right? That's good. Sergio. Uh, my name is Sergio Mendez. And I just want to praise the Lord for my mother-in-law. Uh, she went in for some testing on her heart and everything came back positive. Amen. Good. Amen. Yeah. Next. Next. I know the Lord doesn't laugh and all that. He's just in the corner, just sitting down. Here, you know. here. Ah, I know. I'm just teasing you, folks. I know there's stuff in there. <clears throat> Freddy Garcia, I just want to thank the Lord for what an amazing weekend we got over the Fox Farm in Wisconsin. Yeah. I want to thank everybody to come, and we were actually hanged all together. So it was it was God's grace that we got set. we were saved through the uh, trip back and forth. So thank you. Amen. Good. Wasn't this uh, this week? It was last week. Uh, my wife um, was uh, called to come to work. So, but it wasn't here in Hammond County. It was Jefferson, and she went there to interpret for uh, Jason Maloney. And uh, uh, it was it was what was amazing was because uh, they paid her more than she ever made before when she was working full time. <laughs> So it's a, it's a blessing. Amen. Good. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll give something. Um, Alex wants one too. Um, put this in the you know, the way. Um, and you got everyone here has been through stuff in life. You know. Oh, good to see you. Now that I can see you, I, I did you get the pie? I did. I, did. I wanted to take it, but my wife wanted to leave it. Just again. <laughs> Um, this past couple of months, my wife and I, you know, you want to see God big in life. You know, it doesn't matter that because Dave and I are up here talking and, you know, and we don't have it all. Actually, I think I don't have it all. <laughs> you know, I have a lot to learn, a lot to grow. Um, and we all go through situations in yeah. life. Yep. Right? And I, you know, I'll raise my hand in that one. But, these past couple of months, these past couple, of, maybe a month or two, my wife and I have been going through a lot of stuff. Um, one thing I have learned big time on this is, is God in your suffering. It really gets to your point in life where you sit back and say, you know, God, am I really alone in the hurt and the pain? You know, it's nothing sinful or anything, but it's it's a situation that we're going with family members. We're just we're trying to look for the best, but you know, it hurts when it's family. And you know, sometimes when we get into that type of hurt, all we want is God to do something, do something. But God is like, I'm in there doing something. Yeah. You know, I, I said this last week, which is part of the thing that I was trying to tell you folks. Here, but that's okay. Um, I told you folks this way last week. You know, we love God and everything, but is God your friend? Because, you know, I'm telling you that it's a blessing. When my wife and I are able to get together, pray, seek God's face, and realize everything's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Everything's going to be good. Yeah. Doesn't matter who says what. Doesn't matter what's flowing through. God says, I'm going to take care of it. I have honestly learned how to make God more of a friend. Honestly, I never knew this, and I'm not perfect at this. I have a lot to learn and a lot to grow. 
but I'm learning how to pray even more. Mm-hmm. I thought I prayed. I knew I wasn't perfect at it, but I didn't realize how bad it was. And I've learned how to take it to a new level. My wife knows this. Sometimes I wake up one or two in the morning, I go downstairs, I got my own private area in the sunroom, even though it's dark, there's no sun there. I always tell that to the Lord, I'm coming down here to pray, but there's no sun. And I just, you know, I have fun with the Lord. I have made, one thing I have to be honest with you, I have a friend, and that's Christ. And I love when I can go open his book and talk to, like I'm talking to you right now, it's the way I try to talk to the Lord. It's the only way I'm able in life sometimes to get through things. But then after love, more storm tired, you know, Satan, you know, with plans that we have and everything, Satan wants to attack. And I'm just giving you a testimony because I know you're all going through something, you know. I know I'm not alone in this boat, you know. We're all going in the same route, in the same boat. Sometimes some of us fall off, but we're here ready to help you yeah. and you right back up, amen? But you know what? Satan tries at the at your vulnerable times, say, okay, God is going to start doing wonderful things. Don't let your guard down. When God gives you the blessings, that's an awesome blessing. I know you guys are going to like this. Don't let your guards down. Because that's when Satan tries to throw a little bit curve, and he'll try to hit you with something, and you'll realize, what in the world? God said, hey, bless the Lord and everything. You know, you were able to read the Bible this week longer than what you normally read it. That is a testimony. That is a blessing. Are you able to pray longer than what you used to pray? That's a blessing. That's incredible. Had God done a different change in your life? That's a blessing. Amen. But some of us want to sit back to, oh, I've been free for a month. That's a great blessing. But it's more of a great blessing of you reading the Bible maybe 20 more minutes because you never read it before. Does that make sense? Take those blessings, too. That's why I'm encouraging you folks. You know, whatever situation life brings you, which will bring you something in life, just grab on to the Lord. He's going to take care of you. My wife and I, you know, Sometimes we're just, we're coming this way, just thanking the Lord, hearing some songs, and we're just praising the Lord through the song that out loud between both of us, man, Lord, you're right on this, and you know, one, you know, one was part on the hurting, I'm like, yeah, do you have to make me, make me feel this hurt, Lord? No, you are God. You know, I do like that with the Lord, you know, because it's just to have fun with them, but I understand through the pain, you still could have a smiley face. You can still have beautiful friends on a Friday night. You can still do, you know, my wife and I, I told her this right before, she can tell this to you. Right before we, we were coming, she said, okay, let's hit the devil right in the face. We're going to go and help some people tonight. He wants to play ball, I know how to hit. I'm going to go tonight, we're going to start working, helping other people, friends of ours. And hopefully with your testimonies, they, I think we've said this before, even Tim, throughout the years, people do not understand it. When you're up here, I know you feel it, and Tim feels it, even Sergey when he does this. When you are giving the testimonies, you don't know how much that's doing for us up here. Amen. 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 It's not like, oh, man, we did a good job. No, no, I needed that testimony. I needed that testimony. I needed that testimony. We're here for each other, amen? amen. And I'm telling you, God, this past month, month and a half, has just basically taken my wife and I to a level that we've never been. That's not perfect, don't get me wrong. But it's our level. Let me say it that way. Let me bring it right. It's our level of how we're working in things in life. And God has been good. When I leave from here, I'm always saying every day, God, you're good. God, you're good. Trials are coming, you're good. Battles are in, you're good. I need this, Lord, you're good. Everything's wonderful, you're good. Everything's great, you're good. I read something new in the Bible that I've never read before, you're great. I've read more, i prayed, I've done whatever it is. God, you're good, you're good. You guys know my mom's here with us. She's getting, technically, physically, she's probably getting a little bit worse. But God is still good, amen? Amen. Because I haven't had my mother in over 30 years here living with us. Yeah. So you got to take advantage of life. God is good. Amen? Amen. Alex? Well, not Alex, but your interpreter.
church building, some random kid walks past me with a pizza box and says, hey, want it? Sure. I sit down in the chair and think, wait, I was craving pizza one day, two days in a row, someone I kind of know and kind of don't know, handy free pizza. I think God is trying to hint at me. So I just thought that that would be a new thing for you guys because I thought it was. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Yes, sir. Here we go. Just a uh, Oh, microphone. Mike. I'm going to. Wait, who's speaking? I can't see. I'm waiting. Right Sorry. Just go ahead. Um, so we just got our or not invitations, thank you notes in the mail. So we were starting to write them out and it was just like overwhelming remembering like all the people who were there and like supported us on that day. So um, God is great. And then um, Dakota, we're almost to a month. We're still married. Um, <laughs> Dakota is a great husband. Just to uh, give him some props for that. But God is good. Hey, Tim, we just prayed a couple, we, we just asked for your prayer that you were going to be out because of a family member, your brother-in-law. So we're leaving Monday. Okay, for some reason I thought it was today. But um, uh, Tim Sullivan, I want to thank God for his word and for provision, protection, and for uh, divine healing. Um, uh, some of you know that I had basal cell carcinoma. Uh, I had surgery about 10 months ago, and it, it uh, came back, but we were able to zap it right away. So um, I just want to thank God for the technology that we have now, and the wisdom, and um, uh, just the faith journey that he has taken us on in the uh, last year or so. And uh, he's so good. And, Amen. Uh, uh, I want to thank him for 10,915 days of being saved Amen. and 5,390 days of being married to this beautiful girl. We celebrated 177 months married on Wednesday. And uh, uh, we are going to Portland. Um, uh, Monday will be gone through Saturday. And uh, if uh, you would pray for my sister. Um, her name's Erin Krause. <laughs> she lost her husband um, uh, through battle of uh, uh, ALS. Uh, he, he actually passed away in July, but they uh, wanted to postpone the celebration of life. Tuesday, actually, it would, would have been their 30th wedding anniversary. So we're going to have it then. And um, I... I anticipate seeing a lot of unsaved family members that I haven't seen in a long time. So I'm praying for divine appointments. And so if you would just pray along those lines for um, traveling mercies and divine appointments and uh, for comfort for my sister and um, also my nephew and niece, uh, uh, Zachary, and his wife, Kelsey, and then my niece, uh, Aubrey, and her boyfriend, Angel. So, uh, thank you so much. Great to be here. Um, I love being in, in our uh, called out assembly. And uh, we will miss you next Friday, but um, our, our spirits will be here. So, thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I just want to praise God for his love, for his grace, and for just being such an awesome God. Um, I want to praise him for answering prayers, too. Uh, he answers prayers a lot of times in a way that I'm not expecting him to. And uh, the past couple of weeks, I've been having a lot of issues with the carpet trailer. Um, I was doing an AOB in the Spanish department, and all of a sudden, I lost water pressure. So I run down there to check on it, and one of the hoses sprung a leak and sprayed water everywhere. Oh, no. So I shut it off and uh, got it fixed. And then last week, um, I lost the vacuum, 
and the coupling had shattered and, and it, um, it stopped. But uh, through all that, you know, I kind of got frustrated. But uh, I've been praying for God for knowledge and for wisdom. And uh, it's happened in the past, and I've seen Greg do it. And he, he actually ordered some extra parts. So I was actually able to fix it myself. Amen. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I think that that was uh, God answering a prayer, you know, for, like, knowledge and wisdom. Because now I, I kind of feel more confident that if it happened again, I think I'd be able to. It makes it alone. So, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, I just want to praise God for answering prayers and yes. for His patience and His grace. Amen. 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 Now you got it, my friend. Well, here's a back you up. Uh, made dinner, uh, chicken and rice. Okay, sitting out with my roommate. Uh, decided to sit and pray, and I was food and whatnot. And, uh, I found myself going into routine. Oh, well, Heavenly Father, blah, 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 right? I said, wait, wait, wait. There's something my spirit said. So he said, start having a conversation. Exactly what you were saying. So I just wanted to confirm that this was being confirmed. Um, I had to start a conversation. I just threw out all that canned stuff and that routine we going through that rut. And I just started having a conversation with God. Amen. And uh, it rung a bell because I know uh, Pastor Wilkerson was talking about it in his sermons recently about uh, prayer. And um, you know, the question is, can we pray without ceasing? No, you can't if you're trying to pray ineffectually, which is, oh, Lord God, thank you for this. Oh, Lord God, can you help me with that? Or, you can't do it. But you can be in continual prayer if you're having a conversation. That's good. A conversation. So why did God make us? Obviously for his good pleasure. There you go. Right? So how can he have good pleasure if we're just approaching him constantly like little kids? Little babies, give me, give me, give me. Thank you, thank you, give me, give me, give me. He can't. He wants to be intimate with us. And what you were saying was so confirmed in what I was about ready to. So you don't pray or you're not saying things and testify to it, but I was taken aback because you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to testify tonight. And um, so that's this. So it's like the guy with the uh, pizza. That's God's way of um, encouraging us. And to let him know, us know that no, this is not all superstition. He yes, wants us to reaffirm us in personal ways, in little ways that maybe only we know. You know. But it, let, let's not lose this point that this brother here was making. Um, prayer is not simply, Lord, give me, give me. Lord God, I got a toenail, uh, ingrown toenail. Lord God, thank you for helping with the pain. Thank you for answering prayers. Thank you for this wonderful Sunday. Uh, you know, dinner. No, he wants us constantly. You know, when I was praying, um, I was praying for my roommate. He's an old guy, and uh, he has a bad liver, so he's pretty infirm. And um, he has these little idiosyncrasies that makes it very difficult uh, to deal with him sometimes, patience wise. He, he feigns feebleness more than he is. And I know that's uh, proof of it. You know, and it gets frustrating when he's always saying, huh, what, huh, you know. So I, I was kind of praying on that situation. Okay, yeah. And, um, um, and yeah, so yeah, God just let me know, talk with me, have a dialogue, have a dialogue. And um, when, you, when you talk, to, when you actually have a conversation with God, talking like conversation wise, you expect a response. And I realized when I was praying, something came to me. Because I find myself rebuking him often, Dan, sometimes not pleasantly. But the Spirit told me right then and there and convicted me. Because I don't encourage Dan enough. Dan became saved when he moved in with me. Okay, the border. And um, he's manifested over the last year tremendous growth. But it's so much easier for us to see the negativity of problems the holes than to see the growth, you know? And I was convicted right then when I was praying, you know, to say to God out loud, um, and he convicted me about Dan. And I said, hey, Dan, I just want to let you know that I'm proud of you. I see great growth. And though I'm always harping on you when you play dumb, you play deaf, you mm-hmm. slow walk and all this stuff, you know, I, mean, I just want to encourage you. And so if that was a re- reaffirmation of what he told me to begin with. Because if I was just praying, from one side to God, thank him, 
asked me to provide supplication, I never would have been open to hear him rebuke me and say, hey, you're kicking this guy's butt too often. You're not encouraging him. You know? So that is a takeaway. Don't let it go. It's too important. It's too important. Yeah, it's good. Good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I guess I'm saying something. <laughs> Man, what a blessing it's been. You know what, Joe? I, I think my brother, Brother Tony, uh, I first met Joe. We went out to eat with Brother Tom Herzl and Brother Danny Mendez. And uh, we were sitting at the table, and they, uh, Brother Tom said, Hey, I need you to introduce you. I got to introduce you to some guy. And it was Joe. And that was like two months ago, wasn't it? At least yeah. two months ago. Look where he's at now, just sharing blessings for the cause of Christ. Amen. Amen. I just want to say what a, what a privilege it is for me a part of, to be a part of this ministry. Um, we have some of the greatest ministries here at First Baptist Church, don't we? Yeah. And uh, with Tony and Brother Connor, you guys just do a great job. And Tim, let's pray for you guys this week. And uh, God's been good. Amen. He's been good. And, uh, you know, I, 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 there's so much that I want to say. There's so much that I could say. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. But most of all, thank you for salvation, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, guys. That's good. Amen. something this morning, I opened the Bible program, and, you know, one of the first things I, I read was 2 Corinthians 4. If you read it today, you probably um, read it verse 18. While we look at, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And I just built a simple conversation driving back from the airport with the Lord. I said, Lord, you know, you want me, where he was telling you clearly, while we look not at things which are seen. Like, Lord, I, my eyes see everything that's bad. Mm -hmm. right. My eyes see everything that hurts. You know, and you're trying to see, what are you asking me? I said, Lord, why are you trying to ask me while we look not at the things which we see? I can't get my worldly stuff out of my face to be able to see the stuff that you want. And I felt like, Lord, is saying, that's why I'm giving you my word. I'm showing you through my word there's things that you need to see that are better than what you're seeing naturally around. That's exactly what I do. That's my type of prayer. It's not the perfect. You might build different ones. Yes, through there I still go and pray for my family, pray. I go through this list. When Brother Connor sends me this, and Wednesday I told you I received the list. That's the first thing I print out on my, on my iPad to get it, and I sent to the printer for today, but I go through it myself and just read And I actually literally just look right here to Brian. Um, and he's asking for Stacy and Shane, Lord, you know the, what it is for, Lord. You know, you know the need that they have there. I don't know, Lord, but I just want to make an intercession that we're to you so you can know who they are. Amen. You don't know, you could, you could pray for God for a long time. I'll be frank with you. If you just make common sense, we can talk to someone. I can talk to Brother Lincoln probably for an hour about what? I'll start by ushering. Then I'll start talking about, are you on Friday night? And then we'll start talking about all the corny jokes, after all the great jokes you give. <laughs> you know, we can have a long conversation. And God says, I gave you a book for a long conversation. Go for it. My name is Matthew Perkins. I, I really wasn't going to give a testimony, but then when you said it, you said it kind of pushed me over the edge. Uh, that, uh, you know, it's, this isn't normally how you start on this testimony, but uh, this past year has been a, an unusually discouraging year for me. And that, um, you know, there hasn't been some great tragedy and some uh, no like great sickness and somebody in my family or no like uh, 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 insurmountable thing, you know, but uh, it's just, um, it's been a financially, it's, there's been a financial struggle. And without really going into what all it means, it's just, it's been an extremely lonely year. Uh, and so I just feel like I sort of got to take a moment just to testify and credit that uh, even in all that, God is good. Amen. And uh, even when I can't say, you know, I, I really had this great victory this week, or that, uh, you know, I really uh, got to see God do this or move in this way this week, uh, I'm still saved. Amen. You know, <laughs> you know, when you stop to think about how preposterous that is, like I, I know who I am. You don't know who I, you don't know what sins I commit. You don't know what struggles I have, but I know what they are, and right. God knows what they are, and I'm still saved. You know, Amen. there's nothing I can do. That can surmount or overcome or overpass the grace of God. Amen. And no matter what happens in my life, I still have salvation. And not only that, but I have a friend. 
I have I, I have a friend in Jesus. Amen. And uh, you know, you look at you know, I don't deserve to have a friend in Jesus. Mm. Uh, but that's not what it's about. It's not about that anyway. It's just about the fact that he loves me. Amen. And because of that, I love him. Amen. And, uh, and you know, he's, he's given me the grace to keep going forward. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not been the easiest uh, time lately. And, and, you know, I even got a piece of mail yesterday that had some good <laughs> news in it that really should have got me really excited. But <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm so lukewarm, lukewarm and lackluster about it just because I've been so discouraged. But uh, I just feel like I have to give God the glory and say thank you, Jesus, for, for loving me and for taking care of me. And each step of the way, even though I haven't always had what I thought I needed, I've always had what I needed. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, I, I ate today. You know, I have a job. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a, a wife and a four-year-old son. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I prayed with them today because they just left to go out of town to go do something. Uh, and, and I prayed with them over the phone, and we didn't ask my son to pray, but as soon as I was done praying, he immediately just started praying. Amen. Like, he wanted to pray too, you know? And nobody prompted him to do that. He just wanted, it, and I mean, you know, these are the things that, you know, it's like in the midst of everything else, you gotta find these great things to be grateful for, you know? Amen. And so I just want to thank him for all that he's done. Amen, that's good. <laughs> Sharing a little bit last week was uh, I had to uh, take my physical in order to, to uh, before I can finish anything as far as employment and stuff. And I'm, I'm thinking physical, you know, in the last almost five years, you know, being on a disability and not being employed anywhere and or just volunteering and stuff like that is really what I pick to do. And just trusting God. And uh, But uh, today I got to call and and I guess I'm all clear. All I have to do is come in Monday and fill out the rest of the paperwork and, and start uh, working here for the church uh, part time. Amen. Amen. And, uh, it's been almost five years, but now I'm on the payroll again. <laughs> you go. God, God is good. We just got to trust Him. Amen. 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 And after this, we'll go back. We'll go to our classes, go as fast as you can. No. And then, um, I'm going to something tonight. We'll figure it out for you, okay? Good. Good. Now we're preaching. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes and 7 hours. Good. 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 First, let's do the um, principle number six. Ready? <laughs> Those who do not love the Lord do not serve the Lord. Let's pray. The Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come and be here tonight. I know that you are uh, your everything. And I'm, thank you, Lord, that you love us. Thank you that you have blessed us very much. Pray, Lord, that you would bless us some more. Help us to do the things that you want us to do and we'll give you the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, you have your Bible. We're going to look at it. One verse. One verse. 1 Samuel chapter 28 and verse 16. 1 Samuel 28 and verse 16. Before we read this, I'm, I want to ask you a question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Brother Merced has been talking about this recently. How many of you want to be a friend to God? Amen. Yeah. A friend to God. So no, uh, the others can raise your hand. You don't want to be friends. <laughs> oh, um, okay. We well, won't do that again. Wait. First um, Samuel twenty-eight, verse sixteen. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and has become thine enemy? You don't want to be his enemy, right? 
But apparently Saul had gotten to the place where he had become God's enemy. And I don't think Saul was trying to become God's enemy. But he got to the place where he became God's enemy. And you don't want to get there either. There's some things that you can do to get there, but you don't want to do that. You want to do the things that are going to keep you from becoming his enemy. Uh, one of the things that you want to do is stay away from people who are going to pull you away from God. Yeah, that's good, away right? from yeah. church. Away from <coughs> the Bible. Away from prayer. Away from the things that are going to help you. Don't let somebody do that to you. If, you're gonna, if you know they're going to do that, well then it makes sense not to spend a lot of time with them. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness. If you don't have God in your conversation then God is being left out of your life. I go to work and it's, it's easy because they don't want to talk about that. You could go through the whole day and not talk about God at work. That's not what you should do, but I mean, I, you could do that because there's people that would help you to do that, and they're not your friend. Psalm 22 and verse 3. Now I'm going to give you some tips, actually, to kind of improve, get closer to him so you can become his friend. One of the things is found in Psalms 22, verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest, inhabitest the praises of Israel. Notice what it's saying there. That God inhabits the praise. Why is it that every time that we give testimonies, it's, it's like, give us something God did, and we want it to be something positive, not something that's going to make everybody sad. Psalm 102. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. What does our pastor do the first 20 minutes of the service every time? <laughs> He's trying to get us in a place where we can be a, in good fellowship with God. Amen. Yeah. Those who do not Love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. These are psalms that I think help us to, when, you, when you're coming into the presence of God, you're getting closer to him. And as you're coming into his building, through the gates, into the court, kind of picture it when you're coming to, to, to get close to him. Psalm 95, verse 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. See, he's telling you some things that he likes. He likes to hear the psalms. He likes when you give thanksgiving. He likes when you praise him. Psalm 104, verse 33. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. All your life. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. I am. Um, when I lived in Michigan, I, I had visited quite a few different people, and one opportunity to get to visit one of our church members. Went to the house, and when I went in the door, I was like, "Wow." is a Christian person, their house was full of stuff from the business which they had that failed. Then the husband would go to dumpsters and bring home things he found. There was a 14 inch path through the house, stuff up to the eye level. 
throughout the house. Stuff up to the eye level throughout the house. They had too much clutter. Christians can have too much clutter. We have too much clutter in our life. But you don't want to hang around people that are going to add to that. You yeah. want to hang around people that aren't going to add to that. Come on. You, you want know. somebody that's going to help you to improve and not somebody that's going to pull you down. So you want to hang around. Like it says, those who do not love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. So don't hang around those. Hang around those who are going to help you. Saul hurt David's relationship with Jonathan. You say, well, what do you mean? He was trying to kill David all the time. But guess what? When, when David had the opportunity to reverse that and kill Saul, he said, I will not touch the Lord's anointing. He was forgiving Saul, and that's what we need to do. Forgiveness is a big deal in your life. You need to learn how to forgive. Yeah. And there will be opportunities when, when things happen to you that nobody's going to come up to you and say, please forgive me. You're going to have to forgive him without him coming to you. You're going to have to learn how to do that. Proverbs 27 and verse 17. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. That's if you're around somebody who is a friend who is going to help you uplift you, and who is going to help you to serve God, who is going to help you to get in the Bible, who is going to help you to go to church, you want to get around somebody that's going to do that. Make them your friends. Amen. Don't make the ones that are trying to pull you away from God. Yeah. Your friends. Come on. Yes, sir. That's it. Amen. 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 Amen.